Heyo everybody, Haku here with my live reaction to read through for Kubera chapters 84, 85, 86, 87, and 88. I'm gonna be, this is gonna be longer than usual. I'm going to be doing all of the power of name in one video just because I felt like it would feel weird to do like three chapters and then two chapters or two chapters and then three chapters. So I was like, I'm just going to do a longer video than usual. I'm recording this as normal on Monday and planning to post it on Monday. But I was like, even if it ends up being super long and for some reason I, I can't do it until Tuesday, I have to push it back a day. That's not really that big a deal. I would just rather do like all of this arc, all of this section, whatever you want to call it. I have a tendency to call these title sections arcs. Um, so just know that that's kind of what I'm referencing when I say that. So I just felt like it wasn't something that I wanted to split up, wasn't something that I wanted to divide into multiple videos, and and just wanted to do it all at once. So I did a review last week for The Sorrow of Loss, and then I'm going to do the reaction this week for The Power of the Name. The next week I'm going to take another week off of reacting to do a review for AAA Rank Magician, I think is the next one. And then after that I'm going to be back to doing reactions every single week, how long the reactions are, the depend on how much time I have, how long I feel like reacting, but I'll do reactions every single Monday starting the Monday after next, and the reviews will just be as they're done. Whenever, like, I'll work on them in the background, take notes while I can, and then whenever they're done, I'll do them. I don't want to fall too crazy behind on reviews compared to where the reactions are, but at the same time, I want the reactions to say or to stay a decent bit ahead. So again, it'll just depend. Reviews will be this extra bonus video on top of the reaction every single every single Monday. But we are getting towards the end of season one, and when we finish season one, I might again take a week off from reactions to do like some like, I don't know, character ranking, maybe some theories or discussions if I have any ideas for any. Basically just some special videos between season one and season two, and then I'll start doing season two reactions. But either way, with all of that out of the way, let's uh, let's just go ahead and start reading chapter 84 to start us out. So we start with, who's the unhappiest being in the world? A god. Why is that? Because they can't rest. While eternity passes by, they can't look away, escape, or forget. They must exist to carry all sorrow and regret. That is a god. Hey, Kubera, you're amazing. When I heard you guys left me out of the fight, I was hoping you all, er, I was hoping you all get, would get wiped out, I'm assuming. But what's this? Amazing. It truly is. Even though you took all of our troops, how'd you manage to kill the one who was supposed to be the strongest from the beginning? You truly are a genius. Are you being sarcastic, Agni? Huh? Sarcastic? I'm just congratulating you. What you did was incredible. Seriously. So, you didn't hear the details. Just stop it. I have no right to be congratulated. What are you talking about? Everyone thought you were amazing, although the primeval gods didn't seem too happy. That's the problem, Agni. I've done something terrible. So fixated on the conquest before my eyes, I overlook the importance of the power of the name. Soon, there will be no place for me in the world of the gods. Chapter 84, The Power of the Name, Part 1 And we go maybe back to the present? Oh, Priestess, I knew you had good taste. This is the best magician suit we have in our shop. What was your previous dress? It was Sabitri, Burning Rose. Ha, ah, Sabitri, that's a children's brand. You'll realize that good clothes really do make a difference after you wear this. Is this supposed to be worn with nothing on the inside? That's because it's supposed to be a bit revealing. If it feels uncomfortable, just wear another dress under it, like right now. Okay, all done. Turn around. And then we have a new outfit for Brilleth. Whoa, it really suits you well, Priestess. Really, thank you. Hmm, I like it, but its vibe doesn't go well with fire. She is supposed to be the fire priestess. <laughs> you know nothing. There are even priests and priestesses who wear animal suits. Fashion begins by defying the norm. Again, typo there. Now, now, priestess. That's a highly recommended high-quality magician suit. So if you like it, get it without any regrets. Now, people have said a million times over to read scans instead of the official. I don't know if Webtoons would get mad 
if I read scans instead of the official. But if it's like a massive, massive difference, like if it is a crazy difference, enough to risk it, I don't know, would you want to risk my reactions getting taken down to begin with? I don't know. Give me your thoughts, I guess. Um, that's a highly recommended, high-quality magician suit. So if you like it, get it without any regrets. This person's real job is a businesswoman, or businessman. Sorry, I thought that was still, um, yeah, of course, still Lorraine. Uh, I like it, but I think Agni likes the color red. Would he like it even if it's blue? You like it? Okay, then. You've made your decision, right? That'll be 2,980 gold. And because you're the priestess, I won't give you a discount. Er, I won't give you a discount. But still, it's a great deal considering the quality of the fabric. And one gold is equal to $50. That price is completely insane. <laughs> what do you mean? The price is completely insane? Do you not see the material list? The material costs alone. Didn't you pretty much take those materials for free from the creation priest? You try, er, you try asking him. It's because it's me that I got it. And I'm the one who made this suit from start to finish. If you think of the name value of the makers, this is nothing. Don't you ever get sick about, er, sick of bragging about yourself? You're so different from the other double A rank magicians. Hey, why are you trying to pick a fight again? Go to the academy if you're going to act like this. That's my own business. You haven't forgotten that if you don't manage to kick Roosh off her seat at the next magician's meeting, you're getting married next year, right? And then, reference to chapter 74. Can you believe the guild didn't have one single casualty when the whole building collapsed? With rumors aside, she has the support of the people at this rate. Looks like you'll have no choice but to marry. Surely a double-A magician wouldn't go back on their word, would they? Congratulations on your marriage in advance. What is it you want from me? I don't want much, since I'm a humble fighter. Give me a fighter suit, one that costs more than a thousand gold. And the glasses popping off. What's so humble about that? You have so much money. Can't you just buy some er someone homeless some clothes? That goes beyond the bounds of donating. Please don't fight on the little frowny face off screen with uh, Ari. Lorraine, may I pay? I'll pay right now. Huh? You're paying for it yourself. You don't want me to send the bill to the temple? No, I'm going to handle this one myself. The cost for restoring this city will be tremendous. And then, Brilleth. I pretended I was a magician for Meloth and helped out with repairing the city. I did good, right? Right? Now then, let's go buy your dress. Ah, uh, sorry, I already bought my dress. Usually, we would have to hold another contest for the suit like last time, but... We don't know how long that would take, so I need something to wear in the meantime. They say clothes that are common and inexpensive do not fit the priestess, so I bought this expensive dress. What do you think? What is that? It looks like a blanket, he thinks. It's about time she started wearing miniskirts. Why is that dress so damn long? The reason I didn't er, take Insightful Eye Smith was because I thought Lorraine would be uncomfortable. Until I tell her everything, it's going to be that way. She might have even not taking money if you were there. Not listening. What the hell's up with the color? It's the color of Gantarva. Out of all the dresses, she chose that one. Of course, being blue. And then, what do I do? He must really hate it. I knew blue wasn't Agni's favorite color, but I didn't think he'd show it so much. It looks terrible, doesn't it? I guess the color blue doesn't really suit a fire priestess. Okay, maybe I should just wear the color red for the rest of my life. I'll go exchange it for something else right now. To be honest, I didn't like it either. I only bought it because it was recommended to me. <laughs> that isn't true. I really wanted to wear this. I like this one the most. <laughs> Want to come with? I'll pick, or I'll wear what you pick out. No, it's okay. It's pretty. Just wear that. What? Really? It's pretty? And she gets excited. Yes, it's pretty. Really. Pretty. That's a relief. I'm glad you like it. Hmm? No, I wasn't talking about the dress. Never mind that. What happened to the Staff of Agni? Did it disappear when you summoned your weapon? Huh? The Staff? Why? Do you need it? You usually left it stored away in some closet. Ah, uh, that's true, but... It is true. I have Agni, so I don't need the Staff anymore. But that's a shame. I wanted to properly learn how to use it. And it was also my mom's heirloom. I like that it seems like Brilith is maybe going to start taking on 
more herself. I mean, she already took on a lot herself as priestess, but I mean take on more herself as in not leave everything to Agni, but to learn to be a better magician on her own. Did you want to learn how to use it? Then, here you go. And he pulls it out. Where did this come from all of a sudden? It's an item I made. That's why I can merge it and separate it at will. Uh, god level items, part of a god. Uh, I see. Uh, part of a god. So again, that probably also like extends to the bracelet and Kubera. And she sits it down. Cough. So you can separate parts of your body into items? Gods are so unfathomably different from humans. Ah, uh, Rilith, the staff isn't actually a part of my body. Gods are structured completely different, or different from humans and Shuras. Their bodies cannot be separated from their souls, as well as their power, memory, and name. They all form one concept. Okay, so by Lee's having Kubera's name, that means that Lee's is part of Kubera. So we're, we're learning a bit more about the gods themselves, and that's probably also why magic uses by, like, enchanting the god's name, and we know the magic is part of the god's power. So, gods aren't just, like, Agni himself. Agni isn't his physical body, but he's also the just general idea of Agni. He is the name Agni, he's people's memory, or his memory of Agni, he is his power of fire, so the power of fire is also Agni. Like, and his soul, like his soul and body aren't two separate things, it is one thing. So while she's seeing his physical body here, all of that is Agni. It's a different structure. And that means that, so if the bracelet is a god level item created by Kubera, that would mean that the bracelet is Kubera, the god Kubera we've seen is Kubera, but that would also mean that Lee's being given somehow like could you just name anyone a god's name and they would have crazy powers is maybe that why it's like a super forbidden thing or is there a special process by which lee's was made but either way since lee's has the name kubera that means that in a way she is also kubera that's amazing i guess it's natural that the body and soul are one since you can go to and from the underworld as you please but power memory and name are all one why is the name included in the list? Well, just think of the name as an important thing, because the names of the gods are special. Then, does the human with the name of a god have anything to do with that? The human with the name of a god? The more uptight gods take offense to that, but it doesn't actually cause any problems. Even in Aterra, there are five people with the name Agni. Okay, so never mind, that's not what, like it's not, you can't just have a baby, name it a god's name, and the baby becomes special. So whatever's going on with Lee's is, I'm immediately, I've been answered, uh, the process by which Lee's was made is more special than, or special than that. She wasn't just some random person named after a god. But the Shervas that attacked said they were here to kill a human with the name of a god. They said the attack was because of a human named Kubera. It's or isn't it strange? Why would Shervas go after looking go after looking for the name of Kubera? I get what they mean. And then ah, uh, it is just so much as someone talking about me and we cut over to Lee's. I I should have brought a Q tip. Who for safety of Lee's image, this side has been censored. Earwax is flying. Oh, I'm so bored. The view here is always the same and boring. Uh, I drooled. And then the reactions to the uh, er, of the others. That Lee's kid. She has no attractive qualities besides her huge boobs. Her boobs all Asha looks for in a girl? If so, Rana has no chance. Don't get distracted, Ron Sayurofe. And it's been forever. And for some reason, um, when I was thinking of Roosh for something i think it was putting the like characters names and the tags of the of the review video last week i was like um roosh is uh roosh syrafe right and then i was like no she's roosh say ron so where was i thinking of syrafe that's ron's name it's been so long since we've seen this group because the uh the last arc night at rain fire was so long we'll head straight into a wall of ice at this rate who said I was distracted? I saw everything. And we have a splash. I'm sure you were looking at Lee's. You must have eyes in the back of your head or something. Okay, okay. I got distracted. Are you happy now? 
By the way, Asha, do you have bad eyesight? I can read the entire visual acuity chart. Then why don't you pay closer attention to girls' faces? Are you any... Jeez, are you any nicer to girls who are pretty or something like that? If he cares about the face, Rana might just have a chance. To distinguish people, looking at the face is necessary. But I'm not nicer if they are pretty. Female facial structures are of no concern to me. So he doesn't only care about the... Er, so he doesn't care about the face. Only boobs, huh? And then again, the editorial by Currygum. This is not true. That's a relief. At least Rana won't be a potential target for this psycho. <laughs> Rana, I'm sorry. But you're gonna have to let this one go. This guy only wants big boobs. So... Or does your problem get solved if you frown like that? If you don't know the way, just tell me. We go straight from here. I know, I know. Okay, and to be continued, are we finally going to cut away, it seems like a pretty good transition, from the Aterra group and get back to the Lee's group? Um, either way, I guess there's not much to discuss that I didn't discuss, or didn't discuss while reading, so let's go ahead, start reading chapter 84. I'm genuinely really, really excited to get back to the Lees and Asha and Ron, Yuda, get back to that group because we've spent, so it's like Kubera just has multiple like full stories going on and it feels like we've spent so long with the Atera main characters like Agni and Brilith that, and like Gentarva, Marna, they were all involved with this kind of stuff and it's like, it feels like it's been genuinely so long since we've seen this other group of characters. So we have this really, really beautiful looking forest with a lake. Pretty sure we've seen before. Chapter 85, The Power of the Name Part 2. What? The humans are, or the humans in the Magician's Guild are still alive. Yeah. I was looking for survivors in the rummage. Then all these magicians came out of nowhere. We have Hura. They were hiding when you guys were there, but as soon as I was all alone, they all came out. I guess being small does make me an easy opponent, huh? So, are you saying you ran away because you were scared? Huda, you told us that you weren't afraid of humans. Uh, of course not. Er, of course I'm not afraid of them. I was just a tiny bit surprised, that's all. I was going to go back to taking care of them, but the god, or the god Agni's fire snakes came flying. Again, we have the surprised Huda face. You guys already know I'm especially vulnerable to summon transcendental skills. I could lose all my remaining revivals by those kinds of skills. So that's why I couldn't go back. It really wasn't because I was scared of humans. Really. And we've got, what is it, uh, from left to right, that's Pingara, Riagara, Clofe and then Cloche, I think. Maybe I'm getting those two mixed up, but I think it's Clofe and then Cloche. Um, ah, fine, I'll admit it. I could only revive myself a couple more times because of that dragon. I wasn't sure if I could handle all those magicians, so I ran away. I only came to help, er, I only came to help. There's no reason to put my life on the line. You act as if you're proud of running away from humans. Well, I can say this because I'm not the only one who made er, who made the mistake. Can I ask you something, Riagra? Why'd you go to the temple, leaving me alone to look for survivors? That was before Agni arrived, and it wasn't like there were it wasn't like there were any problems at the temple. Wouldn't taking care of the guild come first? Huh, I suppose the temple's more important to you because Sagara is your first priority. You snakes. You guys are so stupid when it comes to Sagara. Tut tut tut. Is she really worth all your devotion? And then Ryagara is the most insanely loyal, the most doggedly loyal to Sagara. So not the one to say that to. Let it go, Ryagara. There are some pro or there were some problems with taking care of things, but things would have been much worse if not for Hura. Yeah, it was all because of Hura that Clope and I were able to get away safe safely. Okay, so no, so Clope is the non-yellow one. I think they were like dark purplish, maybe. The yellow one is Cloche, then. Or I guess Cloque? I don't know if it's Cloque or Cloche. Um, because Cloque was being stupid, something bad almost happened. Ah, at least you guys recognize my contributions. Thank you, thank you. Then why does Ryagara treat me with so much disrespect? The dragon would have killed you if it weren't for me. Hura, you stop it too. What's done is done. So there's nothing more we can do. Let's wait for Sagara to bring good news. 
Sadly, there is no good news. We couldn't eliminate all the humans in the city, but if we ended up killing the target, our mission would have been a success. It would have been great if luck was on our side, but luck rarely comes to the Shuras. His power is unchanged. That means our target in, in a Terra is still alive. Okay, his power is unchanged, so maybe... We know that Kubera has been manipulating stuff, but maybe they're also trying to strike back against Kubera because he's been manipulating stuff, and by taking out the human with his name who has a part of his power, they can weaken Kubera himself. But again, even then, it's like, even if you do kill or take down Kubera, he'll just revive himself in a couple decades. So it's kind of like if a god is a bad person, and it seems like most of them are from what we know, there's not really much you can do about it. And then, then what do we do? If the target survived the attack, they should have already escaped to Terra by now. Huh, does that mean we need to search for the, or for the escape target and kill it? This level, or the level of difficulties just skyrocketed. It's all my fault. If only I hadn't attacked the priestess there. No, this isn't your fault, Sagada. This is all because Marana couldn't kill the target in the first place. <laughs> the Yagata just making all the excuses. By the way, what are Marana and Chess doing? I don't see Gantarva either. I don't know about Marana and Chess, but Gantarva's gone. According to the Gantarva clan, he went into the depths of the ocean. Wow, he's even worse than the rumors say. I was wondering why the Gantarva Gnosticas kept coming er, to the Ashita clan, but I guess it was because their king is a douche. And then, he wasn't so bad before he got married, says Sagara. Even though we were of different clans, I thought he was a king worthy of my respect. Those unrealistic witches destroyed Gontarva and brought the downfall of the whole Gontarva clan. Oh, uh, and thinking about his family, thinking they made him soft. Does Gontarva really believe that Shakuntala's still alive? Who knows? But... I don't think he's that crazy yet. And then we have more of the markings in the ice path. It took us a week, but we're at the exit of Area 50. Before going into Area 51, we'll rest here today. It's going to be hard to find places to rest at in Area 51. So we need to, sorry, so we need to get some sleep while we can. Okay, Asha, take out some food. I'm so hungry. They're getting ready to storm Area 51. I've never been to Area 51. How or how is it? Is it hard? And I wonder if me saying Area 51 so much into my microphone is going to cause, you know, like sometimes when uh, YouTubers mention the the 19 Corvids or they mention like uh, Flat Earth or any conspiracy theories, they get the thing that pops up below the video with like a content warning. I wonder if I'm going to get that from saying this so much because I have seen that kind of thing. There's not much of a difference, except for the presence of Shuras. That won't be a problem. Are the paths tricky? Hmm, usually the difficulty of the paths are no different from here. But since the paths started to change early when they were supposed to start changing... When they were supposed to change starting at Area 51, there might be something unexpected... There might be some unexpected things we've never experienced before. At least we won't get bored. And then, hold on, let's give this some more thought. I don't know why the channel changed, but I think it's too dangerous to keep going with all that's been happening. Are you scared? Huh? No, of course not. You're scared? Really? Wow, oh, you're such a scaredy cat. I had a feeling ever since you went on about being cold in here, you're a weakling who's pretending to be all strong. That's true, right? What are you talking about? Have you seen such a sturdy weakling like me? Hmm? Really? Yuda, are you cold? And he shakes his head no. Look, he isn't wearing anything underneath, but he isn't cold. He flushes. But you're shivering with all those clothes on. If you're a weakling, or if you aren't a weakling, what are you? When did I ever shiver? Um, you were going on about how cold this place was, even when you have all those clothes on. Hey, you got me all wrong. I was worried about you being cold, not me. As for the clothes, I'm just wearing something someone else picked out for me. It'll be fine even if I take it off, or I'll be fine even if I take it off. All I hear are excuses. I'm serious. Fine. It was uncomfortable anyway. I'll just take off all my clothes. <laughs> and then Asha gets pissed. What did you just say? I didn't say anything at all. Okay. I heard something very vulgar. Must be my imagination. Right? 
<sighs> Look at him staring at me because I was going to take off my clothes in front of his girlfriend. Don't stare like that. I have no interest in Lee's at all, you turd. What a weakling. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> that face is too good. We have everyone sleeping. Then Kubera scratching or Lee scratching. <sighs> I was just going to sleep today, but I can't take this anymore. I'm going to take a quick bath. First, let's see if Ron is asleep. Hmm? Yuda isn't here. Where did he go? Did he go to take a bath as well? Well, I guess I can just avoid him when I hear him coming. She, and she goes off. Okay, to be continued then. We still have three more. Exciting. I like that we're getting back to this group, but I also like that we were checking in the past two chapters with the other group, starting things off with the Magicians and Agni, then seeing the Shura again this time around. Uh, Gantarv has gone into the depths of the ocean. We don't know where Shes and Marina are, and that's going to be interesting, because now Shes is also going to be around Cossack. Uh, we don't know what's going to go on with Cossack and Agwen. Getting an update on that would be cool maybe somewhere in here. But again, if we just focus on Lisa's group and then leave all that other stuff to catch back up to later, I think that's fine. Because, again, Kubera, I always feel like we'll get back to it eventually. Like with this, we took 20 plus chapters away, but it was always like, we'll get back to it eventually. And we kind of just skipped ahead just a teeny bit to like where things are actually going to be getting good. I'm excited to see the relationships and comedy between these characters because they're really funny characters to me. I feel like this group is maybe more comedic than the other group we were following for the last arc. And I feel like there was one other thing I wanted to say before I continued into 86. But now that I'm here, kind of forgetting it a little bit. I don't know. I really like the Shura group though there. Like Saigata is pretty cool, whatever. Ryagata is very interesting. Pingara has not had as much time. Um... And then Clope and Cloche are kind of like just the ones that bolster their forces without having as much personality, but I also like them. And then Huda to me is great. Huda I think is like one of my favorite characters at this point. So it's like, I don't know. I guess no spoilers for when I do at the end of season one, when I do a character ranking or something, I haven't thought about how I would rank them. It, it seems so difficult so far because I like Gantarva a lot. Of course, I like Agni and Brilith. I like all of the characters. It's hard to not say Asha would be one of my favorites. I think Ron is good. I like him already a lot. Lise is amazing. Um, Huda, I think, would be one of my favorites. Lorraine would be my, one of my favorites. I really, really like Roosh. I think Roosh would be up there. So it's so tough. Aidy and Ari are both good. Like, all of these characters are amazing, so I don't know how I would rank them quite yet. Okay, on to episode 86, and this is The Power of the Name Part 3. We have Lee's walking through the ice. Let's see. That tunnel over there looks bright and pretty. The problem is that sign. Asha said there were Shura in Area 51. <laughs> That's where they're keeping the Shura? Uh, taking out one or two Shuras won't be a problem, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Can I jump this without turning the bracelet on? She leaps. Okay, she makes it. There aren't supposed to be any Shura. Sorry, I was just taking note, taking note. There aren't supposed to be any Shura, Shura in Area 50, so everything will be alright as long as I don't get lost. And then, it looks like she's going straight there. Chapter 86, Power of the Name Part 3. That's strange. The deeper I go, the darker it gets. All the shiny things have disappeared. I should have just found a spot to take a bath by going back the way we came. This is what I get for being adventurous. But it doesn't look too or it doesn't look too good, but I'll just wash here. I might get lost if I go any further. Then she starts taking her clothes off. Warm ups are annoying, so straight to taking a bath. Don't try this at home. May result in cardiac arrest. Then ah, this is refreshing, just jumping into the freezing cold glacier water. How could Ron ever think that this is too cold? And she hears splashing. And gurgling. What the what was that sound? I'm sure Asha said there'd be no Shura in Area 50. Could it be Yuda? We have more. This sound. It doesn't sound like someone taking a bath. It sounds more like someone struggling in the water. Ah, he's drowning. My goodness. Why would a so-called half be drowning? And then, hang on, I'm coming to save you. She puts her underwear back on. And finds nothing. 
Huh, that's strange. I'm sure the sound was coming from this direction. I heard the splashing just a second ago. Yura, Yura, are you here? And then, what was that sound just now? I thought, or I thought he was drowning or something. And is it going to be Gantarva even? Or is this going to be a different Shura? Hmm, was, cause I was thinking Gantarva cause they said he went to the depths of the ocean, but then I'm like, Nah, really? W would they just bring him right back for this stuff as well to take part in both storylines? I mean, they might. I wonder if this is like a more monstrous, like less transformed version of himself. Hmm, was it really just taking a bath? I suppose if he was splashing around a lot, he could have made those sounds. Yura, Yura, are you hiding because I showed up while you were taking a bath? You can just cover the lower half of your body. There's no need for you to hide. Oh yeah, he can't talk. I must be an idiot. Sorry for interrupting, Yuta. I'll get, er, I'll be going now, so keep taking a bath. Alright. And then whoever it was comes up. I'm sure I heard something that wasn't a splash. I'm sure of it. That sound wasn't Yuta. If there's... So I guess they're not coming up. They're just moving. Uh, there's something under the water. I heard sounds coming from the water, but there are no ripples. It must be somewhere I can't see it, beyond that cliff of ice. But there aren't supposed to be sure as an area 50. Asha said the paths changed, did this change as well? There's no reason for me to go somewhere I don't know and run into Ashura. For now, I'll go back and tell Asha. No, hold on. It sounded like someone fighting. What if Shura was taking a bath in Metashura? Yuta might be in danger, so... Or do I just go back? I can't do that. I'm not doing something crazy, am I? I can't tell if Yuta's in danger or not, yet I'm jumping in just because of that possibility. I can't even see the bottom of the water. Okay, I'm gonna turn on the bracelet. I'm getting stronger, stronger. I can use the attack I used last time and get out of danger. Worst comes to worst, I'll run away. Yeah, that's what I'll do. And she leaps in. What the? No matter how I look at it, that's the corpse of Ashura. And it looks like it was just killed. So was that sound coming from this Shura? If there's a half-eaten Shura here, the Shura that was eating must be around here as well. But why did it leave without eating the other half? Okay, so maybe was that actually... Was that actually Yuta himself? But he was devouring this Shura. Anyway, there's still a possibility Yuta's in danger. Plus, I have the bracelet on, so I'll look around a bit more. Please be safe, Yuta. And whoever it is is watching on. You want to reveal yourself? I never imagined you would think of something so stupid. And they look back. You have a nasty habit of eating your prey while it's still alive. If it weren't for that, you wouldn't have caused such a commotion, and she wouldn't have come all the way here. Anyway, be more er, be more careful in the future. For now, quietly get out of here in human form. I'll distract her for you. Don't be so flattered. I'm not helping you because I like you. Was I wrong? I've searched for a while, but there's nothing here. Maybe you just just sleeping right now. Wait, where am I? This isn't where I went in. This can't be. I'm sure this was the exact spot I went in. By looking er by looking at you ro by looking at you fearlessly roam around, the magician taking care of you must have a really hard time with you. She looks back. Have you thought about the answer to my question? Kubera's just hanging around. To be continued. I, I, it's so funny. When he first showed up, I was like, wow, I wasn't expecting Kubera this early in the story. And now, I was expecting us to, like, maybe see some cameos here and there. I didn't expect to, like, have him full-on interacting with Lee's again for, like, dozens of chapters, maybe even a long time. So again, the first time he shows up, I'm like, wow, I'm surprised. I didn't think Kubera would show up this early in the story. And then he shows up again, and I'm like, wow, I'm surprised. I once again didn't think that he would reappear this early in the story and we have to be continued once again for chapter 86 so i guess that was judah eating the shura and now kubera's covering for him in order to uh unless again i unless i'm getting this way wrong and now kubera's covering it's interesting though that he used shura speech to speak with judah or whoever it was 
It's interesting that Kubera was able to do that. Or I guess maybe gods have always been able to do that, but I feel like he's the first we've seen do that. Unless, unless again, I'm just wrong. But again, the difference between like gods and Gnosticas and primeval gods, again, there are differences, at least from what little I know this short this shortly into the story there are differences but at the same time there are a lot of similarities too so i don't know i guess maybe that's just something that gods can do or at the very least if it's not it's very interesting that we're learning kubera can do it but either way going to move on to chapter 87 87 starts with kubera back by looking at you fearlessly rumor okay we just read that you must or the magician must have a hard time with you have you thought about the answer to my question and then she's shocked she turns around. I must be tired. I'm seeing things. You aren't seeing things. Stop acting like you can't see me. <laughs> he splashes over. I didn't see anything. I didn't hear anything. I'm just confused because I'm lost. Or I'm just confused because I'm lost. If I take things slow, I'll find my way back. And then we have 79A. Okay, there's a sign here. Uh, huh? Wait, what's that? The eyes popping out. Uh, chapter 87, The Power of the Name, Part 4. If you figured out the situation, just give me an answer. I'm the only one here that can help you. Don't tell me you aren't planning on <laughs> don't tell me you're planning on finding your way out of area 79 by yourself, are you? Of course I'll find it with you. Uh, d d just hold on a sec. And <laughs> she splashes away. He might touch my hair again. I need to put some space in between us. <laughs> He's just <laughs> spinning the tube moving closer. Why is your hair curly even when it's wet? Stop teasing me. It just curls up by itself. What am I supposed to do about it? Hmm. Why are you in the form of a kid again? You said you didn't need to catch any attention, in the, or you didn't want to catch any attention in the city. But there isn't anyone here to see you, or er, to see you in here. You don't even know when I'm being considerate. What? What do you mean considerate? He transforms into his adult self. Ah, uh, gross. A man in a kid's tube. I think the tube's gonna pop. And then his expected reaction was, oh my, and covering up and blushing. It was a bit different from what I expected. Anyway, this is why I'm taking the form of a child. Human beings are creatures that are easily blinded by appearances. At least this form doesn't provoke your uncomfortable reactions. There's no point in acting all serious when you look like that. Where'd you leave your clothes? And is there a reason why you have to keep that tube on? Stop interfering in other people's hobbies and just answer my question. Phew, there you go again with the question. It must be er it must be really important for er to you for you to come all the way here to hear my answer. You're like er you're like a stalk no, never mind. Can't you tell me what this is all about though? There's no need for you to know. She gets pissed. Why does everyone around me have so many secrets? Your answer? Stop rushing me. Hmm. So what was it you said last time? I'll er you'll protect me if I say I'll live. Wow, that means this guy's going to follow me around forever. That sounds terrible. <laughs> so if I don't say I want to live, you won't follow me around anymore. Yes, what business would I have with a corpse? If you want to die, just say the word. I'll, er, just say the word. I'll bury you without a trace. And then, shock. In my opinion, I don't think it's such a bad decision for you to die here. Compared to when I first asked you the question, you have even more reasons to, er, Compared to when I first asked you the question, you have even more reasons to live now. If you decide to live based on those couple of reasons, for sure, you'll regret that decision later. Then what about you? What? Since you seem to be so sure of that, you must be expecting something in the future. That means you know what'll happen, right? While I'm regretting my decision, what'll you be doing? And then we cut away to him by a tree. Kubera. No, you aren't Kubera anymore. I don't know what to call you anymore. Anyway, I'm here to give you some advice. Please speak. Even if you start being honest now, you won't be easily forgiven. So, wouldn't it be better to be cunning and deceitful? Just like when you tricked Ananta. I don't want to repay wrong for wrong. Really? Well, fine. The choice is yours to make. But remember this. Your opponent already knows how this battle will end. He isn't a fool who would start a fight that he'd lose. Okay, so he deceived Ananta. And then, well, if me living causes you harm, you wouldn't have given me a choice. That means me living's beneficial for you, right? That, er, that I don't know. 
I'm not Vishnu. You don't know. I see. Then pretty much you're giving me the dice you're supposed to roll and asking me to roll it for you. And he looks surprised. Oh, she might have she might have actually nailed it. He might be too apprehensive to make the decision on his own of whether to kill her or to let her live. So he's leaving it up to her because it's like it's a trolley problem, basically. There's no need to be ashamed about that. We all have times in our lives when we want someone else to make our decision for us. Just because you're an adult doesn't mean you have all the answers. Fine, I'll roll the dice for you. It's no problem. I'll live. I'll keep living and in the future, I'll see whether you end up happy or sad. I don't know what this is all about, but I do know that you aren't a bad person, even though you are a pervert. Because what I mean by a trolley problem, it's like, again, to say that without context, not everybody would get that or maybe is American. I don't know how common the idea or concept of that would be anywhere else. I mean, it's not even like it's an extremely common thing for most Americans to know. But it's like if if you have one person tied on the tracks and five people tied on another set of train tracks and the train is going for the five people, but you can pull a lever to make it go for the one person, what do you do? And the idea behind it isn't choosing between two things like, oh, which thing would you rather get hit? The idea behind the trolley problem is, is it better to do nothing even if more people die? Or is it better to do something and less people die, but it, the decision is on you? Because if you don't do anything, you can say, well, the decision wasn't on me, even though is not making a decision, making a decision. So it's kind of like that with Kubera here, where it's like, he doesn't know whether to let er, Lee's live or die, but if he makes a choice to let her live or die, that's him making a choice. But he's kind of pushing the choice onto her. He's kind of standing back saying, I'm not going to make a choice and have Lee's make the choice instead. And she smiles. Screw off. Don't come any closer. If you come any closer, I'll kill you. And we see future Lee's, I'm assuming, from what we've seen in these, like, glimpses. The future I see is changed. She's speaking informally, but why? Okay, so the future, we've learned already early on that the future, I mean, in every series where they're like, oh, the future can't be changed, it can always be changed. Like, there's always something that happens that changes the future, so obviously it was going to be changeable. But we're learning very early on, or the characters at least are learning early on, Kubera is, that in this series, the future can be changed. Okay, we're done talking. Should we look for a way back now? Area 79. How'd I end up all the way here? And we have flap. There's no need to look. Wherever you go, or wherever you wish to go, just let me know. I'll take you there right away. And it's so interesting because it's hard to tell. This has been Kubera's most nice, friendly conversation in the entire series so far. He seemed so sketchy and so antagonistic up until now. And this is the first time he's actually seemed like you know, cool. To be continued. So, a very, uh, very different side of Kubera that we've got to see. Also, I love how every time I flip over or, um, or Webtoons pops back up, it's like, bam, flashbang. And then, uh, the camera adjusts to it over time. But, yeah, either way, we got one more chapter. That was really cool. Again, it's a different side of Kubera. Let's go to chapter 88 to finish off the arc. All right, finishing out the arc with episode 88, we have, I guess that's uh, Yuda walking through the ice. Mother, how is it that you're able to destroy even a god-level item made by the primeval god Vishnu? Oh, and he's got the earrings? Rather. Why would you go so far to drag me into chaos? There's no need for me to be there, is there? Okay. So, does that mean the earrings are destroyed? I mean, it, it, with the art, it's, it's kind of hard to tell. They just look like earrings. But if they are destroyed, then, I mean, well, I mean, that's that's very much not good because he can't return like not only is he kind of in trouble but also he can't return them anymore to um to Kazak if they're destroyed but his mother can somehow destroy them at our like at a distance like that somehow through some connection with them probably so she's incredibly powerful 
and no need for me to be there makes me think is she maybe in the Shura realm currently? And then chapter 88, The Power of the Name, part 5. Stop, this is it here. You're so fast, mister. Can you teach me this magic or whatever it is? You aren't skilled enough to er you aren't skilled enough yet to learn. Ah well, that does make sense. I can't even use any of those common Hoti magic spells. You should be able to use Hoti magic if you just learn it a little. Huh? But I heard magicians are supposed to be good at calculating. Forget about being good at it. I'm rather terrible at it. You don't have to go by the book er you don't have to go by the books can calculate. I'm assuming he means you don't have to calculate, like, by the books. You can probably do it naturally because of the power of the god's name or whatever. There are people who can figure it out without any calculations. Gods and Shuras do not use calculations when using their transcendental skills, and among humans there are a selected few who use similar methods to those of gods and Shuras. And then, I guess again, is this more hints at future Lees? And she has all of the cool bitties out, damn. Um... <laughs> this is not due uh, to the difference in intelligence. Rather, it's because of the difference in the way of thinking. For instance, some can un er, can intuitively understand dimensions greater than the one you're residing in. Um, and then one person thinking this is so obvious while the others are thinking, it's so complicated, what does this mean? No matter how much I read, I don't get it. I guess I'll just memorize the whole thing. I wonder if that's... I wonder if Asha is really just a savant at calculations or if this is the way that asha does things since asha does things that no person without a triple attribute should be able to do when learned anyone can explain the higher dimensions in theory but not anyone can understand it intuitively and completely excuse me i have no idea what you're talking about ask a magician to test you if i'm correct you have the ability to intuitively calculate Hmm, I don't know what you're talking about, but it sounds like a compliment. Thank you. Everyone said the ability to calculate was a must-have. Okay, it won't hurt to ask Ron. Anyway, thank you. Yeah, it won't hurt to ask Ron. It might hurt to, it might hurt to ask Asha. Anyway, thank you for bringing me all the way here. I can go by myself from here on, so you don't need to follow me anymore. Even if I say this, I think he's still going to follow me around. I mean, he came all the way into the channel just to get an answer from me. He also said he would protect me if I decided to live. I'm not as free as you'd think. <laughs> He's tiny. Uh, then what did you mean by protecting me? Well, good for me. It's a good thing that you're busy. You may go your way now, mister. But why here of all places? Huh? You said that I can take you anywhere you want, but you chose here. I'm sure this isn't your final destination. Uh, were you going to take me all the way to Calabloom? What would I do by myself in Calabloom when Asha, Yuda, and Ron aren't all, the, er, aren't all here? Is there nowhere else you wish to go besides Calabloom? Besides Calabloom? There is one place. Then why didn't you tell me? Because I cannot go there now. And then... We're done talking, right? I'm gonna go. She walks off. Alright, mister. Are you not gonna tell me your name? You seem to know my real name, but it... Er, but don't you think it's unfair if you don't... And then he disappeared again. What the hell? He's already gone. Boo, you suck. I have no name. Ha, my goodness, you scared the hell out of me. I wonder then, maybe that's why Lee's is special. And why random people named Agni, those five guys, random guy named Agni be like. That's what, that's why those guys aren't special, but Lee's is. Maybe she, however she was born with his name, literally took his name. So he literally does not have the name Kubera anymore. She has it. Whatever that means. We're getting kind of metaphysical with all this. Oh my goodness, you scared the hell out of me. Don't just brush this off. What if I, er, what I've just told you is of grave importance? I wasn't planning on telling you this, but it doesn't sound that important. Anyway, what do you mean by I have no name? Ah, fine. You have your reason for not telling me. I get it. Then should I give you a name? How does Alexander sound? No thanks. Why does everyone hate the name Alexander? You can't just give me a name. Just call me Mister. And that's er that's the only and that's only possible if you don't use that title as a name. And then she's confused. Ha ah, fine, mister. But it feels kind of awkward calling you Mister when you look so young. Do not be attached to appearances. True er look at what truly lies beneath. 
You're still younger than me in mind, body, and power. No, saying that when you look so young. Words aren't enough for you. And then he touches her hair again. Ah, what was that? Don't pull, it hurts. This isn't a wig. <laughs> He's still just floating around pulling on her hair. Ah, stop it. What are you doing? While I messed up your hair, you couldn't even brush my hand. This is the difference in our speed. Shall we test our strength by arm wrestling? You don't need to prove it to me like this. It's a relief you understood. Anyway, you can't do anything in your current state. The next time we meet, grow strong enough to be worthy of the power of the name. Oh, hold on. It sounds like you're going to disappear in a minute. And he vanishes again. Jeez. He was right in front of me, but I didn't even see where he went. Exactly how fast is this guy? He said to look at what truly lies beneath, but a man who likes playing with kitty tubes, either way he seems like a kid. And <laughs> he's just listening. So really he didn't vanish, he just ran away super fast. And now we have pissed Asha. Just how far did you go? Uh, Asha, let me explain. I went to make er I went that way to make sure I would avoid Area 51. Hey kid, luck was on your side. That way's Area 51 too. What did you say? Please, come sit down here. Let's just talk for three hours. Asha, please. And then Yuda still looks pensive, upset. Next chapter, lies for you. Which is going to be, it's so crazy. This, How is this going to be the end of season one? It doesn't feel like a climax. This is crazy. Like, if anything, the last arc felt more climactic. This is a crazy place to end, so I have no idea what's going to happen for the next one, because we're still not even... I thought maybe we would kind of get through the ice structure stuff, but no, we're not even through that, so I have no clue. So yeah, that's that's crazy. We have one more arc for Season 1. I'm excited to get to it. Like I said, when I finish Season 1, I'll do some special videos when... Uh, actually... I was, yeah, when I finish season one, I'll do some special videos. Next week, I'm not going to do a reaction. I'm going to do another review instead. We'll do AAA Rank Magician. After that, again, it'll just be reactions weekly until we finish season one. Then special videos. Then we start reacting to season two. Just letting you all know, thank you so much for watching. Like the video, like the video. Comment down there too. Tell me what you thought of these chapters. My first thoughts and reaction to all of them. Subscribe for more Kubera. Much, much more on the channel. Follow on Twitter if you want. If you want to link to the Discord server, it's free and open for anyone just ask and i can give you a link if you want to help support the channel then you can drop a super thanks down below if you want to not only support the channel to help me to continue to make videos but also get shout outs at the end of every video get uh, one piece videos a bit early you can hit join down below to become a channel member or go to patreon.com slash hawk of the tubes or the link will be in the description to become a uh to become a patron. Sorry, lost my train of thought. Thank you to people who are already patrons and channel members. Thank you to Chosen Regular, uh, Evan Holly, Magical Girls, FNO No and Abyss Knight, Chiriton Students, David Langstaff and Folded Ghoul, Slayer Candidates, SG and Stan Cedar, and Pure Element Patriarchal. Thank you all so, so, so much for your support. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.